For Niels Bohr, measurement changes everything. He believed that before you measured or observed a particle, its characteristics were uncertain. For example, an electron in the double slit experiment. Before the detector at the back pinpoints its location, it could be almost anywhere with a whole range of possibilities until the moment you observe it. And only at that moment will the location's uncertainty disappear. According to Bohr's approach to quantum mechanics, when you measure a particle, the act of measurement forces the particle to relinquish all of the possible places it could have been and select one definite location where you find it. The act of measurement is what forces the particle to make that choice. Niels Bohr accepted that the nature of reality was inherently fuzzy, but not Einstein. He believed in certainty, not just when something is measured or looked at, but all the time. As Einstein said, I like to think the moon is there even when I'm not looking at it. That's what Einstein was, was so upset about. Do we really think the reality of the universe rests on whether or not we happen to open our eyes? That's just bizarre. Einstein was convinced something was missing from quantum theory, something that would describe all the detailed features of particles, like their locations, even when you were not looking at them. But at the time, few physicists shared his concern. And I just thought it was giving up on the job of the physicist. Uh, it wasn't bad physics per se, it just was totally incomplete. That's Einstein's refrain. Quantum mechanics is not incorrect, it's as far as, insofar as it goes, but it's incomplete. It doesn't capture all of the things that can be said or predicted with certainty. Despite Einstein's arguments, Niels Bohr remained unmoved. When Einstein repeated that God does not play dice, Bohr responded, stop telling God what to do. But in 1935, Einstein thought he'd finally found the Achilles heel of quantum mechanics. Something so strange, so counter to all logical views of the universe, he thought it held the key to proving the theory was incomplete. It's called entanglement. The most bizarre, the most absurd, the most crazy, the most ridiculous prediction that quantum mechanics makes is entanglement. Entanglement is a theoretical prediction that comes from the equations of quantum mechanics. Two particles can become entangled if they're close together and their properties become linked. Remarkably, quantum mechanics says that even if you separated those particles, sending them in opposite directions, they could remain entangled inextricably connected. To understand how profoundly weird this is, consider a property of electrons called spin. Unlike a spinning top, an electron spin, as with other quantum qualities, is generally completely fuzzy and uncertain until the moment you measure it. And when you do, you'll find it's either spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. It's kind of like this wheel. When it stops turning, it will randomly land on either red or blue. Now imagine a second wheel. If these two wheels behave like two entangled electrons, then every time one landed red, the other is guaranteed to land on blue and vice versa. Now, since the wheels are not connected, that's suspicious enough. But the quantum mechanics embraced by Niels Bohr and his colleagues went even further, predicting that if one of the pair were far away, even on the moon, with no wires or transmitters connecting them, still, if you look at one and find red, the other is sure to be blue. In other words, if you measured a particle here, not only would you affect it, but your measurement would also affect its entangled partner, no matter how distant. For Einstein, 
That kind of weird long-range connection between spinning wheels or particles was so ludicrous, he called it spooky. Spooky action at a distance. When you have one particle here and one particle there, and they are separated enough that there is no signal able to allow them to communicate, and they still seem to be talking to each other, then is a big mystery. What's surprising is that when you make a measurement of one particle, you affect the state of the other particle. You change its state. There's no forces or pulleys or, you know, telephone wires. There's nothing connecting those things, right? How could my choice to act here have anything to do with what happens over there? So there's no way they can communicate with each other. So it is completely bizarre. Einstein just could not accept that entanglement worked this way, convincing himself that only the math was weird, not reality. He agreed that entangled particles could exist, but he thought that there was a simpler explanation for why they were linked that did not involve a mysterious long-distance connection. Instead, he insisted that entangled particles were more like a pair of gloves. Imagine someone separates the two gloves, putting each in a case. Then that person delivers one of those cases to me. And sends the other case to Antarctica. Thanks. Before I look inside my case, I know that it has either a left hand or a right hand glove. And when I open my case, if I find a left hand glove, then at that instant, I know the case in Antarctica must contain a right-hand glove, even though no one has looked inside. There's nothing mysterious about this. Obviously, by looking inside the case, I've not affected either glove. This case has always had a left-hand glove, and the one in Antarctica has always had a right-hand glove. That was set from the moment the gloves were separated and packed away. Now, Einstein thought that exactly the same idea applies to entangled particles. Whatever configuration the electrons are in must have been fully determined from the moment that they flew apart. Einstein comes and says, look, if there is a strong correlation, it means that the direction of the spins were already determined before you do the measurement. So, who was right? Bohr? who championed the equations that said that particles were like spinning wheels that could immediately link their random results even across great distances, or Einstein, who believed there was no spooky connection, but instead everything was decided well before you looked. Well, the big challenge in figuring out who is right, Bohr or Einstein, is that Einstein is saying a particle, say, has a definite spin before you measure it. How do you check that, you say to Einstein? He says, well, measure it, and you'll find the definite spin. Bohr would say, but it's the act of measurement that brought that spin to a definite state. No one knew how to resolve the problem. So the whole question came to be considered philosophy, not science. In 1955, Einstein died, still convinced that quantum mechanics offered, at best, an incomplete picture of reality. In 1967, at Columbia University, Einstein's mission to challenge quantum mechanics was taken up by an unlikely recruit. John Clauser was on the verge of earning a PhD in astrophysics. The only thing standing in his way was his grade in quantum mechanics. When I was still a graduate student, try as I might, I could not understand quantum mechanics. Clauser was wondering if Einstein might be right when he made a life-altering discovery. It was an obscure paper by a little-known Irish physicist named John Bell. Amazingly, Bell seemed to have found a way to break the deadlock between Einstein and Bohr and show once and for all who was right 
about the universe. I was convinced that the quantum mechanical view was probably wrong. Reading the paper, Clauser saw that Bell had discovered how to tell if entangled particles were really communicating through spooky action, like matching spinning wheels, or if there was nothing spooky at all, and the particles were already set in their ways, like a pair of gloves. What's more, with some clever mathematics, Bell showed that if spooky action were not at work, then quantum mechanics wasn't merely incomplete, as Einstein thought. It was wrong. I came to the conclusion that, my God, this is one of the most profound results I've ever seen. Bell was a theorist, but his paper showed that the question could be decided if you could build a machine that created and compared many pairs of entangled particles. Bell turned the question into an experimental question. It wasn't just going to be about philosophy or, or trading pieces of paper. And the experiment that he envisioned could be done. You could really set up an actual experiment to, to force the issue. Clauser set about constructing a machine that would finally settle the debate. Now, I was just this punk graduate student at the time. This really seemed like, oh, uh, wow. <laughs> There's always the slim chance that you will find a result that will shake the world. Clauser's machine could measure thousands of pairs of entangled particles and compare them in many different directions. As the results started coming in, Clauser was surprised and not happy. I kept asking myself, what have I done wrong? <laughs> what mistakes have I made in this? Clauser repeated his experiments. And soon, French physicist Alain Espée developed some even more sophisticated tests, with one going to the heart of the Einstein-Bohr debate. In Espée's test, the only way that measuring one of the particles could directly influence the other would be for a signal to travel between them faster than the speed of light, something Einstein himself had shown impossible. The only remaining explanation was spooky action. And so, Aspey's experiment removed virtually all doubt. Quantum mechanics is true even in the most mysterious and the most weird situations. The results of these experiments are truly shocking. They prove that the math of quantum mechanics is right. Entanglement is real. Quantum particles can be linked across space. Measuring one thing can, in fact, instantly affect its distant partner, as if the space between them didn't even exist. The one thing that Einstein thought was impossible, spooky action at a distance, actually happens. I was, uh, again, <laughs> uh, very saddened that I had not overthrown quantum mechanics because I still uh, had and to this day still have great difficulty in understanding it. That is the most bizarre thing of quantum mechanics. It is impossible to even comprehend. Don't even ask me why. Don't ask me which you're going to, how it works, because it's an illegal question. All we can say is that is apparently the way the world ticks.